Hello everyone and thank you for watching. This is me, Mr. P. Welcome back to another episode in the Proxmox Home Server series. In this video, we'll show you how you can set up from zero to fully functioning home assistant virtual machine. And not just I'm going to show you how to set up a home office, home office, home assistant from scratch, but I'll show you how Z-Wave smart plugs working with a home assistant. I will use AOTech Gen 5 USB Z-Wave hub, which is already being plugged in in the Proxmox, in the Proxmox box. And I will use these two smart plugs. This one, the square one is AO Tech smart plug with the uh, USB connection. So if you are gonna buy this, you can have a USB uh, cable or power going, let's say to a phone or something. And this is, is called Fibaro. They, they are two versions of these. This is the one with the USB. There is others that don't have USB and they're like a, a pound or so cheaper. All the stuff that I'm going to show in this video, I will leave a links to these products on Amazon um, if you want to go and purchase them. But basically, I'm going to use the AOTech Gen 5 USB Z-Wave USB, USB hub to control these two Z-Wave devices. So let's start setting up a home assistant virtual machine inside the Proxmox. First thing, we need to create ourselves a virtual machine to run home assistant. I'm going to click on virtual machine but, uh, button here or create VM button. And right now I'm just going to give a name which is going to be HAOS-YT. So home, ass uh, home assistant OS-YT. Under OS, I'm going to choose, we will not use any media because we're going to import the drive already so with the home assistant already set up. Uh, Linux, you leave that by default in 6.x, you leave that by default. Under systems, I need to change from BIOS, default BIOS to UEFI and choose the location to store very small UEFI image. So this is where it's going to go. Under disks, I will choose this to SATA just to speed up a bit. And from 32, change to something else that 32. We will delete this hard drive anyway, but the home assistant drive that we will import is 32 gigabytes as well. So it's going to be hard to detect which one to uh, basically destroy. Uh, it's going to make more sense in a in couple of minutes, but it's going to be easier to spot which one we create and which we will import. So I'm just going to change to some, let's say you can even change to 13, for example, just to stand out in the list. Under CPUs, one core is not that great. I would say two is, is minimum. Memory, two gigabytes of RAM is fine, but if your Proxmox host or your Proxmox machine has some free RAM available, I suggest to increase that up to four just to make everything running faster. Network, we're going to leave everything by default, confirm everything by default. I will not tick start after create and press finish. So right now the virtual machine is getting created. And once it's created, let's wait for a second. Yeah, that's it. So we have virtual machine created, but there is no media that we're going to use to set up because the media, what we're going to use is already pre-configured home assistant drive. To do to find the, that or to find the drive, you just Go somewhere in Google, in Bing, in Google, just go and search for Home Assistant and you will find the page. Obviously, a link will be in the description below, but it's just I'm showing you how you can find that image. So you on the Home Assistant page, I will click Get Started, Installation, and I click Alternative, or you can scroll down, you click Alternative, it just auto-scrolls to the location. I'm going to click on Alternative, but as you can see, Home Assistant can be installed on a variety of devices. I was actually running Home Assistant for quite some time on Raspberry Pi. And then Windows, you can run on Mac. As you can see, generic AX86 and Intel Nux, you can run on that. So I'm going to click Alternative. And the KVM slash Proxmox, that's what we need. I will right click and choose Copy. Now I'll go back inside my Proxmox, I'll click on a node on a PV, PVE sandbox, the Proxmox name. Under Shell, you first need to check if WGET exists. Uh, in my case, uh, as you can see, it shows a uh, message saying uh, if you see a line saying something about the help, that means the program is installed. If you if you, if you don't have that, just run a w -A -P -A -A -P -T install wget and it's just going to say nothing to install because it's already installed. So I'm going to write wget space and paste le the link. Uh, press enter. And right now wget basically goes and downloads that archived image of the home assistant drive that we're going to use to import into the virtual machine and get home assistant running. So I'm going to wait for this to get downloaded and it's done. Next thing you need to um, extract this file because at the moment it's an XZ file, which is our archived file. To extract, we're going to use a program called P7zip. If you don't have that, just again, app install P7zip. 
If you follow my video about setting up a DIAP iOS in a Proxmox, and if you're using the same Proxmox instant, you probably already had that installed. But if you don't, just run like I just saw, apt install p7zip. So I'm gonna clear the screen, and right now I have this Home Assistant downloaded. I need to extract this by running a command called 7zr space x for extract and a file name. In my case, as you can see, it's a Home Assistant OS version 10. Press enter. And right now, 7-zip will go and get this file extracted. It's extracted in a QCOW2 format, and this is great. But the during import process, we still we will still need to force it to import as a QCOW2 format because it's going to be much easier for us to do backups. So it needs to run at the QCOW2 setup. So right now, I have two files. Actually, let's go do this way. So we have actual archive. And we have the file that we extracted. Now, the ID number, make sure that you select the correct id number of your home assistant in my case it's 100 because it's well it's, it's the first id number but if you have a bunch of um, vms and stuff running make sure when when you create a home assistant vm make sure you know take a note of id number you don't want to import the drive into a wrong vm so to import the drive what we need to run is is called qm and then write disk import 100 and then give a name of the file in my case as you can see home assistant d -d 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 dot qcow2 now you need to space and then specify location where the this drive needs to basically moved uh, because it's a fresh proxmox setup i mine is used local but let's say you have a zfs connected and other stuff you already you, sh you should already know where your drives located so you just make sure you put the the right name here in my case it's just going to be local but yours might be something else so just make sure you put the right location and then double dash format equals q cow 2 and press enter and it's going to right now go get this file that we extracted set everything up and import the drive into the 100 um of oh, the ID VM ID number 100 and the hardware right now I have this drive which it says unused disk zero I will double click and it's, it automatically picks up SATA is one because SATA zero has been used I'm just gonna say everything is fine and click add and now as you can see this is shows 32 and this is 13 if I kept the original driver 32 I will be like, okay, which one I need to remove? Yes, I know it's SATA 1, that is the right one, and SATA 0 I need to remove, but this way it just makes a bit life easier for you guys. This stands out straight away that this drive I need to remove, so you just select the, the drive that was automatically created during VM creation process. You just select that. In my case, as you can see, 13G. I'm just click detach, say yes, then select at the bottom where it says a new disk, and then click remove, and yes, and Proxmo is just gonna delete that completely. Before you run VM now, you need to click on options, click on a, a boot order and click edit. And now I need to put the tick next to SATA 1 because first it's going to boot from CD-ROM. It's not going to find them, it's going to try to do a network boot. And if I will not put the tick, it's going to try to run, it will ignore the drive. But I'm going to say, yeah, drive is included and just make everything easier. I'm just going to click and drag that to the top. So I'm going to say, this is order. I want the stuff to get uh, checked during a boot process. And obviously first will be drive. Click OK. Now on the console, before I press start, I need to let you know one thing you need to do when the VM starts. As soon as you will see a Proxmox logo and at the bottom is going to say something like press escape to setup configuration or something, you need to press escape. So just keep, keep an eye, just watch what I'm doing. So click start. And now I'll wait for Proxmox to show up and press escape. As you saw at the bottom, it says something start something. Just press escape to get into a virtual machine bio setup. Now I need to go and select devices using arrows, arrow keys on a keyboard. Click device manager, secure boot configuration, press enter. Attempt secure boot and press space and say, that's fine, press enter. What that does that is it removes the safe boot um, check uh, if you leave this X on, there is a big chance that the Home Assistant VM will not start at all. So once you've done all that, you can press F10 to save and press Y to confirm. Then escape, escape. And once you're on this main page, click reset and select reset and press enter. Reset basically means restart. So I'm going to say, yeah, I want that to be restarted. So it's restarting now. Let's wait for a second to for that to go. Okay, it was saying start boot options, that's the one. So I pressed escape at that point, And that's when um, the uh, I managed to get into a boot configuration. So right now leave this VM to start. It's gonna take about 
20-30 seconds. So I'll be back when this VM is fully functioning. And here we are, VM is started. And one of the lines here will present the IP address that you need to access. So in my case is ending with 184. I'm going to open a new tab and put 192.168.178.184 colon 8123 is a port number for Home Assistant. Press enter. And right now the number page will, web GUI will show up. It's going to say it will take up to 20 minutes for Home Assistant to set up everything. So in the background is doing all the file preparations. We're basically doing making sure that the VM is fully or all the files are fully prepared and ready to go before Home Assistant starts. From my experience, it never took longer than two, three minutes. Just leave that going for about two, between two and three minutes, actually, before even finish talking is running. Anyway, so name, name is basically the name of your, uh, let's say Home Assistant instance. So I'm going to say Home Assistant and then username going to be Mr. P. I'm going to put the password something easy. Mine one is just one, two, three, QWE. Just put whatever password you want. Click create account. Now you need to fill the information. You can't leave the blank. Otherwise the home assistant will complain. So I'm just going to fill up that United Kingdom time zone, Europe, London. Yes. Currency will be G great, great British pounds, metro metrics. Uh, that's fine. Click next. Uh, it's asking you, do, are you all okay to send uh, basically anonymous data to uh, Home Assistant team with the usages? You can turn them on and off. It depends on you. On the next. So right now, this is uh, the Home Assistant because I already have my main Home Assistant running in, a home, in my house. And there's a bunch of stuff already set up. It's already detected some of the things like, for example, my router. Detected the router, two options. It detected my 3D printer running on the Raspberry Pi 02W and a couple of things that by two years. So I'm going to just click finish. And here we go. We are inside our home assistant setup. And that's it. This is home assistant. Everything is great. If I click around, there is a bunch of stuff we need to go device at the moment. That's where you will find all the devices. You can see it's detected four of them and asking me, I'm like, do I want to set them up? I'm just going to ignore them and I will click on a settings system. Then I click hardware, not hardware, sorry, system. And then at the top, there is this uh, turn off button. I click on that, expand more options and say shut down the system. It will not shut down the Proxmox, but it will shut down the, um, the virtual machine. So I'm going to say shut down the system. I'm okay with that. So this is right now, Home Assistant is basically getting uh, closed. If I go to back to Proxmox, I will start seeing things happening in the terminal that Home Assistant is getting shutting down. What, why I'm doing this is that I need to right now assign the, my Z-Wave USB hub to this virtual machine. So I'm click while this is happening. Actually, I need to wait for this to completely be off because some of the virtual machines will moan that you're attaching USB drive while the machine is still active. So let's wait for this to finish. Okay, it's off. So now I select the right home assistant, uh, the right virtual machine. The icon should change in about a couple of seconds. Here we go to a gray icon. Under options and also under hardware, I'll click on add and choose USB device. I suggest go by USB vendor. The reason why that if you decide to move the USB hub from let's say USB port one to USB port two, the Proxmox will go and search for, for vendor ID number. But if you know that your US, your Z wave hub will be always plugged in in that USB port, you can go by USB port and choosing this one, like in my case it's going to be this and it's going to be port two one. I will go by the vendor ID number instead. And I know this is the one that I need to pick because it's definitely not the key UMU USB tablet. This is the one zero six five eight. But let's say you have a bunch of stuff showing up here. I suggest the way I did on my main Proxmox a setup where I have at least 12 or 15 showing up here is that I plugged in the USB Z wave USB hub uh, into the um, into Proxmox and I went just any random virtual machine and why well you can use this one right now open this drop down and just take a screenshot of that then disconnect your Z wave USB hub and take a screenshot after and just see which basically thing is missing just go like I spot the difference so I'm going to select this. So unknown device. Some of the USB hubs by Z-Wave USB hubs will uh, will be detected properly and will show up the name. Like there is a AOTAG Gen 7 USB hub, which is definitely like shows us showing a full name. But I know this is definitely the one 0658 because this is the one I've been using for quite a while. So I'm going to click add. And as soon as white line shows up, that means the um, VM detected that the USB drive has been assigned. So now I, I can go back to a console and click start now. So right now home assistant starting. 
with the Z-Wave USB hub assigned to this virtual machine. So let's wait for this to finish, to booting up. If I click on here, it says connection lost reconnecting in the web GUI. And actually this will auto refresh as soon as it detects that the virtual machine is up and running. So let's give a second or so to start. Actually started. Here we go. It says starting home assistant supervised. Did your home assistant start? That's it. So now if I click on settings, devices, there's more stuff showing up here. And one of them, it says TTYACMO. And at the bottom, it says Z-Way. And this is the pro the Home Assistant Virtual Machine detecting that there is a Z-Way USB hub detected and assigned to this. To double check that uh, is definitely TTYACM0, I can click on a settings, go and click on a system, hardware, then click on all hardware and look for the ID number. In my case, I were, as I was saying, it's 0658, and it says its location is in dev slash TTYACM0. That's great. I'm gonna click on the settings. Now I'm gonna click on the devices. I'm gonna say, yeah, I want to configure that. I'm gonna click, yes. Obviously, there is other way you can do this. You can click on the add-ons and go and add the add-on by the Z-Wave team but you can go actually it's there. I, I missed it. That's the one you can install this if you want, or you can go via the actual devices setup and click through, through here. If you can't see this one in here, maybe your home assistant setup while you're doing this, having a hard time to detect this, you can go the settings, add-ons and install, click on add store and install through here. I'm going to go under devices and click configure. Do you want to set up this device? It gives me a location and serial number, everything. I'm going to say yes. And now it's automatically goes and then loads and installs Z-Wave JS plugin. Gets that installed. It's asking you a bunch of stuff. You can leave these all blank because the Home Assistant will generate the unique keys between its um, open operating system, let's say, and the actual USB hub, just to make sure that everything communication is secure. So I'm going to say submit, and let's wait for Home Assistant fi to finish the JS setup. While it's actually doing, there is another plugin which is called. Um, Z Wave JS UI. Um, so you, you can choose where you want this to be located. I'm going to say uh, a new location. I'm going to call it Home Office. Fine. If there's another plugin that I've been using, well, I was using for quite a while, then I decided to move back to um, the normal G Z Wave JS. Is this is the one? And I'm not showing this one for. Uh, the reason that this is, this is quite complicated for the beginner who's just learning what the Z-Wave stuff is, I suggest to go with the other one to learn how basically Z-Wave setup happenings and etc. As this one will give you way more configuration, but this is way it it might feel a bit like overwhelming when you open up the dashboard of Z-Wave you Z-Wave JS UI and just like oh my god I, I don't know what everything is happening here and you just stop using Z-Wave devices. So let's go back inside the, the settings, devices, and I'll click on configure. And right now it shows that the uh, network connected means that like Z-Wave network is up. It's one device. If I click on devices, it shows the Z-Stick Gen 5. And this is by a company called AOTech. It says AO Labs. And right now I'm going to start adding the devices. With the devices to add, like for example, these two uh, smart plugs, AOTech smart plug and uh, Fibaro, when you're buying the Z-Wave plugs, it always will come with a manual, obviously. Please make sure you read the manual properly because the way that this plug is needs to be set up is totally different from how this needs to be set up. There, like this one, for example, it has a button here on this side. So if you're looking from the front here in UK, this is where the button located. Where on the AO Tech one is here in at this at the front there and these buttons in the z-wave devices called action buttons so first we're going to set up the z um the ao tech one i'm going to just plug that in into my extension cable so i'm just it's right now start it should start cycling through the colors to make sure that means that it's been reset it's, it's never been paired to any usb hub z-wave usb hub so that's it so that is ready so right now i'm going to just click add device and searching for device, we can QR code, QR scan code. I always say can because it's a Proxmox server and stuff. So I'm just going to press this button once. And this right now initiating the pairing mode. It starts broadcasting the signal to every Z-Wave USB hub around this plug to say, look, I, I'm available. Please, please put me in your friend list. And this is what just happened. It's been added to the friend list. If I'm going to click view device, 
and let's go with that. So it's right now the Z-Wave hub, USB hub, detecting everything what this plug can do. At the moment, it just shows like a sensors and stuff, but just give another couple of seconds or so, it should start populating with the more configurations to have. I just press refresh. So I'm just gonna log back in and press keep me logged in. Here we go, more stuff showed up. So this is the one, the plugs, the, the actual switch. So I'm gonna hold like this. If I can pick it up, I'm gonna say on, 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 off. And once, if you set up the Home Assistant as a fresh instant, and the, the overview is gonna be a default dashboard, which is called Home. And this is where the, the stuff will just automatically start showing up. So this is the Smart Switch 6. It says that it's basically consumption 0.02 kilowatts and stuff. I'm gonna say, yeah, I wanna turn that off and it's off. I wanna turn that on and it's on and it's showing up back and forward. The way that this is set up is slightly different. So what I'll do now, let me plug that in. First, this Fibaro plug, like I said, is, is different setup. To initiate the, the pairing mode with the AO Tech one, I had to press one. With this one, the side button needs to be pressed three times in a quick succession, one, two, three. And another thing, at the back of this plug, there is a serial number and the first five digits, it's pin code for this plug. In this case, my pin code should be 61084, just to make sure that I will not forget 61084. I'm just gonna quickly do like this, 61084, just to show up that if I will start yapping more and I will forget the, ID, the pin number, I can go and refer back to this tab. So let's go back to settings, devices, and let's click on a, Z-Wave JS, when now it says two devices, if we click on this, this two device is showing up. So right now I'm just need to plug in the Fibaro one into the socket. It starts glowing in a different color, it's a different shape and a different pattern of the, of the colors. So let's wait for this to, uh, I think that's it, that's in the pairing mode. And button is located this side, so we need to press one, two, three. Let's click add, I'm gonna say one, two, three. And right now it's broadcasting the pairing signal. And right now, as you can see, there's a bunch of numbers. It says pin now code was 61084. Press submit. And right now it's loading. So let's give a second. Here we go, device detect. And, and uh, Z-Wave Hub is interviewing this device. So it's finding out everything about this device, what it can do, what kind of sensors it has, um, what kind of stuff it can do, like everything about it. So right now it says Fibaro wall plug. And one to one is actually, if you're gonna look online, if you look for FG, WPG, one to one is the one with USB connection to the side, and one to zero is without. Just a quick, quick information for you. So as you can see, this is this one shows a bit different information than the previous one, but it does, it has this uh, on and off switch. So I'm just gonna say on. As you can see, start uh, put the the sort of like a, it's I think a cyan color around it, off. And what's a thing, quite an interesting thing about these plugs is that if I'm gonna right now select the Fibaro and click on figure, I have a bunch of options I can change here. So if I scroll down, it should say where it says, uh, when load is on, I will want to have a red color. So let's wait for this. Here we go, it's changed to red. This is what quite useful when, for example, I had a couple of plugs here to my office desk. So just by looking what color is, is, is on, I can say that if there is a power being provided to whatever device is connected here or not. Like for example, downstairs, uh, one of my uh, one of these plugs have been used for the TV. So just opening a door and having a quick look what the color is behind the telly, I can know straight away if the telly is being turned, turned off or, or not. Uh, because it's quite hard to see from a um, status LED of my TV if it's actually on and off. So I just want to turn it off when I go, for example, to bed just to make sure that I don't waste energy or because UK in UK electricity prices are goes through the roof. So this is the setup on this one. Let's go back to the device list. Let's click on a smart switch six. If I click on configure, this has a completely different setup process, uh, setup information, etc and what kind of things you want to do with it what how how often how often data needs to be pulled like right now it says automatic reporting interval 600 seconds where on fibaro one is going to be probably 3600 seconds let's double check if i remember correctly where are you uh to, to, to here we go 3600 seconds uh, energy reporting interval and consumption and stuff so that's it we have a fully functioning home assistant setup in the Proxmox, P, Proxmox virtual environment or Proxmox uh, PVE. 
and it's running and right now I have USB hub, Z-Wave USB hub connected and everything is runs perfectly. And because we selected the QCOW2 setup, it's much easier right now for us to do a backups. Let's run a backup for example, just in case if I want, if I, I'm planning to do something stupid or go and try something in the home assistant, the backup is great, great thing to have. And QCOW2 file format of the main drive allows us to do snapshot as well. So I can go and say fresh install and say take a snapshot. Okay, it can't do because it's in a backup mode. Anyway, it's much easier to do snapshots. And I do snapshots uh, once in a while when there's a big update of a home assistant, just to make sure that the update will not break anything because I don't want to go and start reconfiguring 15, 20 smart plugs and stuff. Uh, just because the um, the update just messed, messed with the stuff. So that's it. This is how you get Home Assistant running inside the Proxmox. This is how you set up Z-Wave, um, Z-Wave devices. And I showed you with the uh, AOTech and Fibano one. All these devices and the USB hub, all the links to this stuff, you will find in the description below, below the like button. I would appreciate if you, you would click a subscribe button as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.